Hey guys, on today's episode, we are heading out to a warehouse that apparently has a ton of cars in it. I got a phone call last week from a gentleman named Andy Hill. He is the chief operating officer at North American Motor Car. Now, as it turns out, they're building a huge facility in the same town that I am. And he said, hey, can you do me a favor? Come check out this warehouse. We need a couple cars detailed and I just need your opinion. I said, absolutely, my ears sort of perked up. Uh, so we're doing that today. Inside are a couple of old cars uh, that we're gonna bring back to the studio, detail them up. So whole lot going on today on this episode, Drive and Protect. When I eventually found the very nondescript building, I met up with Andy Hill from my earlier phone call. Now, he is in charge of a few large collections, including this one here, that need to be cleaned up before some of them go up for sale. 32 Roadster, yeah, you got like ZR1 Corvette, Bentley Bentaga. Uh, we got a real deal Jeff Gordon car. We have this 69 Mustang Mach 1 that we'd like you to, you know, do a little detail on. So, get this cover off. Oh, wow. Yeah, it definitely needs a little love for sure. Yeah, no doubt. And, uh, then, and there uh, was another one. Yeah, this 1970 Plymouth Superbird right here. Jeez. So uh, this car, this car is a 34,000 original mile car. Uh, it's had one repaint. Wow. Uh, this car was formerly owned by uh, NASCAR Hall of Famer Ray Everham, and uh, he signed the car for us. We're uh, getting ready to sell this car, so uh, we'd like it clean, detailed, you know, soup to nuts. 1970, uh, they only made, I believe, 1,620 Superbirds, and of the 1,600, uh, it was very rare to find one with a white leather interior yeah. and an automatic. I believe they only made about about 400 automatics. This so unbelievable. Pretty rare car. After seeing the Mustang and the Superbird definitely in need of a detail, and as we started to move the cars out of the bunch and sort of see everything, I had to ask Andy, what was going on with all these cars? What's the story? All right, so this is ridiculously legit. So what's going on in here? <laughs> Give me a little bit of the backstory of what's going on. Sure, this is a collection that we manage for one of our customers. And uh, that's something that we do at North American Motor Car. So as you can see, we have this particular client has an eclectic taste. Anything from four by fours to supercars to NASCAR race cars, we have it all here. I, I read in the paper that you're building a new facility and the whole thing, what's going on there? We are, so we're building a, a huge facility in Danbury. It's gonna have two big buildings, about 51,000 square feet. Uh, we're gonna be able to hold 267 cars in our storage facility. Uh, the front building is going to be a display area with our corporate offices, huge restoration shop, mechanic shop, upholstery shop. Mm -hmm. So we'll be able to handle all your automotive solutions under one roof. Now, if you want to see the provenance and the history of each of the cars for sale, click the link above to see the behind the scenes car by car tour on the Ammo Studio channel. And this has a LS motor in it, so it's a super fast <laughs> limo. <laughs> For now, I headed back to the shop to meet Steve and the Superbird during the offload. Listen to this thing coming off the trailer. Such a beast. I love this car. Once inside and under the detail lights, you can really see the amount of dust and the swirls present in the paint. Now, the next morning, I turned what feels like the longest car in the world around so that it could be under the lights in a certain way so I could see a little bit more. And when they were there, I could see that the faded radial TA white walls needed some love. There were tons of swirls, love marks, and of course, water spots everywhere. So clearly, the owner at one time drove the car, and to see this thing on public roads must have been insane. Now the inside wasn't really terrible, but definitely needed a freshening up as everything felt very kind of dry and dusty from just sitting so long. My favorite part by far though is the Beep Beep Roadrunner horn centerpiece. How cool is that? The gauge cluster and the dashboard, although dusty, were still in great condition, all things considered. 
Now, I've never seen in real life the inside of a trunk on a Superbird, but from what I heard, it's incredibly large, which was the understatement of the century, especially with respect to today's modern vehicles. This thing was huge. Then I quickly inspected the heart of the bird, which is the 440 Commando. Again, very dusty, but nothing really major, which is good news. Lastly, during my inspection, I found like black watermarks or something sticky that was behind the front wheels on both sides that will need to be addressed during the wash, which is coming up now. First, I filled the foamer with ammo foam soap and boost wash to lubricate the surface and to gently remove the heavier driving grind. After pouring a few ounces of soap, then fill halfway with water and gently mix. Repeat the same steps in your towel bucket and brute wheel soap in your wheel bucket. Next, I power washed everything while checking for water tightness, meaning making sure you don't see any leaks coming down the window, which it did not. During the rinse, you can actually see layers of dust being carried away by the water, which is why a healthy pre-rinse can be so helpful in your overall effort to minimize the scratching that can occur during unlubricated wiping. Because I'm inside and out of the sun, I can let the paint soak in foam for a little bit more than I would, let's say, outside in the sun while I work on the wheels. I left the white walls that need to be worked on until the very end, so more on this later. Next, I dunk my fresh towels in the wash bucket and gently agitate the lubricated paint. Be sure to use a gentle brush in the tight spots like emblems and lights when necessary, then rinse again. You can really see just how much junk gets flushed out from sitting so long. This is actually super common on trim and seams on original cars that haven't been washed in a very long time. Then I walked over and turned the breaker onto the compressor out back to build up some pressure for the drying and blowout process. As I've mentioned in the past and on podcasts or whatever, I wear ear protection these days because I feel like my ears are tending to, to ring a lot longer than they have in the past, especially on long compressed air usage and full details, so keep that in mind. Likewise, if you plan on working on a lot of cars, having drop down lines on all four corners of the car is worth every single penny. Not only is it just convenient to walk over and grab it, but it's way safer to the paint as you avoid dragging it over bumpers or hoods or whatever. As in every video or every car that I've done, you can and you should adjust your technique as the paint dictates what it needs or what it wants with respect to its willingness to be corrected safely. That's a long way of saying you're going to change your pads and your polishes as you work the detail. That's totally normal. In this particular case, I bumped up to a two-step polish with a blue microfiber pad and compound instead of my original pipe dream of just a one-step polish. In other words, I thought I could get away with a quicker paint restoration, but the paint had other ideas. So, two steps it is. The 50-50 on the trunk was awesome, and I was really starting to sort of get comfortable as I dialed in the perfect balance between cutting the paint and preserving the paint. Remember the detailer's oath, do no harm and leave as much paint as possible. Swirled paint is much better than having no paint at all. As for the stickers, you can polish them just like we did on the Pebble Beach McLaren video with Kevin Brown. To do it, first make sure that the stickers aren't peeling. If they're not peeling, then use a foam pad and lots of polish or liquid, meaning more than usual because the sticker will release lots of residue into your pad, possibly scouring the paint and the sticker in the process. That's a lot of polish right there. Using this abundance of liquid will help keep the residue coming off the stickers suspended during that short polishing time. So keep that in mind if you choose to correct stickers. After the hours of polishing the five miles of paint on this car, I then focused on the three inch DA in tighter areas. Once done with the paint correction, I needed a little bit of break on my back. So next up was the engine, a 440 cubic inch V8 four barrel carb automatic, one of only 400 produced in automatic. Now, check out the original Roadrunner horn. How freaking cool is this thing? <laughs> Once 
Once the paint was perfect and the engine was clean and my back had a minute to rest, I then applied Ammo Reflex Pro to the exterior. As always, make sure you remember to give it a good shake and prime the pad for the very first application. Once it rainbows, which can vary from a few seconds all the way up to a minute or so, based on the humidity, temperature, and so on in your area, just let the product tell you when it's ready to be wiped off and then wipe it with a microfiber towel. When you're done with the job, just make sure you throw your towels in the wash within an hour or two of the actual application, and then you can reuse them safely in the future. After the first layer of Reflex Pro, it looks completely insane, but keep in mind that it will have more depth and gloss in the next 24 hours or so once it fully cures. Likewise, you can apply it over decals, stickers, trim, and black plastic as well. Next, for the wheels, metal trim, and chrome bumpers, I'm using Gillet Pro Wheel and Metal Coat, which has five times the amount of solids, meaning it's much stronger and heat resistant, but not nearly as flexible as Reflex is for the paint. However, you can use it on painted wheels due to the higher heat resistance. Remove it with a microfiber towel within 10 to 20 seconds or so, based again on the humidity and temperature in your area. This will make cleaning your wheels much easier in the future. For the white walls, I used wrapper remover, which is an adhesive remover on a throwaway towel. Gently wipe and rotate the towel as it picks up the darkish grime. The before and after is pretty subtle, but the combination of all the little improvements from the paint to the wheels to the interior will add up to a huge difference when it comes to sale time. With both Reflex and Gillette Curing, I focused quickly on the interior as the white seats needed a bit of love from lather and interior brush to lift and remove the light layer of dust and film as you can see on the microfiber towel when I was done. I forgot about the Ray Everham autograph until I opened the glove box, which was pretty cool to see. Now, he was Jeff Gordon's pit crew chief, and he himself is a NASCAR Hall of Famer. Ray is credited as the innovator for training pit crews on strength and agility and assigning certain roles for each member to shorten the pit stops. Anyhow, this was his car, which makes it extra special. Afterwards, the steering wheel, dash, and doors were all cleaned before a quick vacuum front and back. Even the interior has a lot of space. I felt like I was vacuuming my living room floor. Finally, I added mud to the tires before applying ammo mousse to the roof, which made a huge difference in the depth and the UV protection of the black area on top of the orange. The contrast was amazing. After a few minutes, I buffed off any unabsorbed protection for a uniform finish. Lastly, I cleaned the glass with my towels and squeegee, sprayed once, quickly wiped the heavy grime with a microfiber towel, then lightly mist obey again, then used the squeegee, then a final wipe with the blue glass towel to pick up the remaining streaks. I know it sounds like a lot, but it's actually a pretty effective way to do it without kind of chasing your tail. Also keep in mind that the last wipe with the blue towel is a little bit grippy and that's okay. That means you're really getting the last remaining water, which causes those streaks. So it's a give and take type of thing. Now all that was left was to check over my work and then pull her outside before Andy arrived to check out the finished job. The paint looked so good. I felt like I could just dive into it. It was so wet after the restoration and of course pro. Same thing on the wheels and the chrome. I was absolutely pumped. Now Andy knew that I loved this car, probably because I said it like 400 times when he was there, but he asked me, I think, <laughs> knowing that I love the car, hey, could you drive this to the other warehouse for me? And I, before he could even get the sentence out, I was like, absolutely yes. So before he knew it, I was in the car, started it, and started driving down the road. Now, Ferraris and Lambos are super cool, no doubt about it. But this thing is next level. Awesome, just freaking awesome behind the wheel. The horn, I mean, come on, the best thing ever. You're driving down the street, you own that road. Oh my gosh, one of the most exciting cars I've ever driven. Now, you're not gonna drive a thousand miles an hour in that car, I get it. But the presence of that aren't uh, unbelievable. So much fun. Wow, this thing looks killer. Crazy, right? Just on the way here, I probably had 400 people take pictures. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, you know, 
rare car. When do you ever see them, you know? Uh, I believe there's probably about, I think someone was saying 900 left in existence of the 1920 uh, that were produced in 1970. Unbelievable. And you know, to find one 34,000 original mile car, automatic, they only made about 400 automatics. Usually they came four speed cars and to have the white leather interior in it usually came black, so. So nice. This is my favorite part car. too. Let's see if it works you know? without the key. <laughs> <laughs> I must have done that like 25 times on the way. Roadrunner, <laughs> if he catches you, you lose, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Well guys, we're all done and the car looks absolutely amazing. Now, like I said uh, in the video, this is for sale. How much? I have no idea. But for more information, visit NorthAmericanMotorCar.com. I have to say, uh, of all the cars I've ever driven, this was the most spectacular in terms of people losing their minds. As soon as I hit the horn, there was people taking photographs. It was just unbelievable. It's something I'll never forget. Plus. We have all of these cars behind here to actually detail and uh, sell as well for the, the guys at uh, NAMC. If you have any questions, you know where to find me. Thanks for watching. Okay guys, we 